agenda, but it's not certainly a blanket no. Simon Breeny is the director of the Legal Rights Project at the IPA. He joins us tonight. Welcome. Good to be with you. And also Jeremy Jones from the Australian Israel and Jewish Affairs Council. AJAC also joins us. Thanks, Jeremy. Good evening. Simon, I'm going to start with you. This is an important issue for you. I know the IPA has fought long and hard on this issue. The amendment would seek to remove the words offend and insult from the legislation. Where is the evidence that this move is actually necessary? I mean, what sort of speech are you so desperate to make? Yeah, look, um, uh, this is a very middle of the road, very modest, very reasonable proposal. Um, I'd love to see 18C repealed in its entirety, but I think that Senator Bernardi's uh, much more modest proposal um, is one that's worthy of consideration and I certainly hope that the government takes it on uh, as I think that it probably will at some point. Uh, obviously the Prime Minister has talked about the fact that it's not a priority at the moment um, but this is a proposal that's supported by people like Julian Burnside and David Marr and the Age has editorialised about it. Gillian Triggs has admitted that there's community concern about 18C. So there's a whole range of people from right across the political spectrum that are in favour of this. And the reason why they're in favour of this is because 18C currently sets too low a threshold. The bar is too low. The words offend and insult are the reason why that bar is set so low. And when you ask the question, what sort of speech do we want to see? Well, um, the kind of speech that QUT students have been engaged in on Facebook, um, the kind of speech that says no to racial segregation, which is what Alex Wood posted on Facebook on the 28th of May 2013. That comment, which is talking about equality between people, it's talking about egalitarianism, is exactly the kind of comment that I think should be protected in a reasonable, rational debate. Um, and 18C has meant that Alex Wood, along with three other students at QUT, have been dragged through first negotiations with the university, then through the Human Rights Commission, and now finally to the Federal Circuit Court. Over the last three years, we still don't have a resolution to that case. I think that's deeply unfair and deeply unjust. Jeremy, you've heard the case for at least a reform of 18C. Uh, Simon argues that the changes that are before the parliament now, or at least that are being, uh, well, they're gaining momentum, are just a moderate change to 18C. Do you see them as a moderate change? I don't see them as something anybody believes in at all. I think it's a complete confection. As Simon said, there are people who have arguments to not have the law at all. They come from a position of saying that we have imposed something which is not right for the Australian community. I disagree strongly, but at least that's a, an argument with some principle. The talk about amending by dropping a couple of words really strikes me as people who are trying to say we're going to do something about the law, we don't really know what we can do that would allow us to occupy any decent moral or political ground, so let's pick at a couple of words. There, I haven't seen a shred of evidence that dropping these words would end the concerns people have with the operation of the law at the moment. I haven't seen anything to suggest that there's anybody passionate about the changes for that reason. I believe that we should keep 18C. I think there's always arguments for reform, for review, any law after any period of time. Look at it, say, how can you make it work the way it's meant to work? But to say, all right, we've had a law, we've had a couple of cases out of very many which we find in some way difficult to deal with. They're not what we wanted, they're not what we expected. Therefore, let's take two words away. I just don't think is a really Fair, it's not an argument that people are really putting forward with any genuine commitment to belief that this is actually going to change anything for the better. But on that issue of the, the QUT students, are you concerned about the application of the law in relation to those students? I have been someone like, unfortunately, too many people who's been the subject of a defamation case in my life where I won at every stage, but nevertheless, it was a very long, difficult process until the judgment was made. Would I say because of what I went through that we should be dropping the defamation law? No, I wouldn't. Would I say because of this case that it's a reason to, change, to drop the law? Definitely not. Is it a reason to look at how it's been administered in this particular case? There seems to be quite a reasonable argument. But as Simon said in his comments, this is a matter that has not been adjudicated yet. We really don't know if there's going to be any finding at all that says that the students acted in breach of the Racial Discrimination Act, 18C, and if they did, if they were not protected 
by the very broad, very strong protections of 18D. So it is a bit difficult, it's more than a bit difficult, it's nonsensical to say because of that matter, particular matter, we should be looking at ways of taking one or two words out of the... Um, out of the formulation of the legislation. I think it's also important to say that in judgments where this matter has been considered, judges have basically come to the conclusion that the words have to be conform with each other. So to drop one or two words out of the four words is not going to change the real effect because it's just going to say, all right, you have to prove that how you come into, uh, uh, that how an offence is caused by the, the other two words and I, I'm yet to think of a case where it would make a, any real difference. Simon, you've heard the argument there. I think that argument that was just made by Jeremy about defamation is actually a very compelling one, particularly the limits on free speech, arguably, that defamation law itself provides, and yet uh, we don't see a big campaign around defamation law. Why is it different on race? Uh, yeah, look, Jeremy raises a fair point. There are more than one restriction on freedom of speech. There are many restrictions on freedom of speech, and uh, I would love for there to be the political will to look at all of those. Uh, there, I mean, you, you, you've got to focus on one issue at a time, and the reason why 18C has become as significant as it is in recent months is because of this particular case. Now, um, Jeremy's talked about the idea that removing a couple of words won't solve the problem. Um, he's absolutely right. It doesn't completely solve all of the free, free speech restrictions that Section 18C puts in place, but it does increase that threshold. The words offend and insult are at a lower threshold than the words humiliate and intimidate. And so when applying the law, judges will clearly take that into account. I mean, there's no statutory... Uh, interpretation principle that says that if you change the words of a legislation that the application won't change, of course the interpretation of the law will change. So um, by increasing that threshold, you're giving judges the opportunity to say, I'm sorry, but your conduct simply hasn't met the threshold that's required by humiliate and intimidate, and therefore we're going to dismiss the complaint, as should have happened in the case uh, of these QUT students. Jeremy, there is obviously growing momentum inside the government. I just had Alan Tudge on. He's a minister. He says it's not a priority, but then effectively also made the case for why he felt very uncomfortable with the current law. Uh, Labor and the Greens and the, the Nick Xenophon team don't support it, but do you, uh, do you have concerns that it's now gaining traction and it is genuinely on the agenda for this government? It's very difficult to know at this stage how real the issue is, even for the people who are supporting it. It's very clear that there are people who want to uh, throw their weight around and show what power and authority they may have within the government and within the government parties, and there'll be others as well. There'll be a combination of people who are principled and people who are opportunistic, who are at the moment pushing this. But you have to look at where the government stands. It's, there hasn't been a moral argument made to change the law. There has not been a moral argument to say that people whose quality of life has been negatively affected by people who have acted in such a way as to be in breach of this law, breach of 18C, and not having been, having been shown, sorry, not to have been acting even in good faith, which is what the 18D protection provides. So it has to be pretty extreme, and there have not been very many contentious cases under the law for that reason. So I think what you will have is there are people who are saying, we're pushing this case and the government, as a government, has to look at it and say, well, we went to an election telling people we weren't going to change it, so therefore there's bad faith with our electorate. Is there a compelling enough reason to change it? Well, it's unproven. I mean, with Alan's last point, when judges have looked at the word insult, they have said that it falls under basically the same definition as the words that would be remaining within the legislation. So we're left with one word, offend, and the question is whether offend has been the cause of any problems with the law. I don't know. Uh, I saw the comments of Alan Tudge and other people who've been part of this debate, and many people have raised not an unreasonable suggestion that it's worthwhile always looking at laws, reforming to see if they can be made better. That's not the same thing as a resolution coming from uh, senators to change two words of a piece of legislation. I mean, uh, when we were listening to uh, your comments and Simon's comments about defamation law, there are other restrictions. There's, uh, there's laws relating to false advertising. And as it is, I'm not hearing a strong push from anybody to say, let's allow people to falsely advertise their product. 
What we have with the racial discrimination law is effectively saying you can't falsely advertise about communities. I've been involved in racial discrimination cases, racial hatred cases under 18C, where the bottom line has been people have wanted to say that there are certain characteristics held by members of a particular group and if they said any individual had those characteristics they would be able to be brought before the law for defamation. Because they talk about a whole group, members of that group have no protection federally unless we keep 18C. And so you okay. could say if you're going to reform 18C, you would still be looking at the question of how you give protections to people whose quality of life is being taken away by others who are not acting in good faith, who are not making a fair comment, who are not seeking to bring news, but are really acting in a way to try and Jeremy. take away from another. Thank you, Jeremy. We're fast running out of time. I'm literally going to give, I'm going to shortchange you, Simon, give you the chance for a two sentence answer, which is do you genuinely think you can get this up in this term of parliament? Yes, yes, absolutely, I do. I think the moral case is incredibly strong because it's about the intrinsic value of freedom of speech as a human right. The, the Australian Law Reform Commission recognised this in its multiculturalism and law report, which led to the 1994 bill introducing 18C. Uh, that advice was ignored by Michael Lavarch, the Attorney General at the time. So absolutely, I think that this is possible. I think it will happen. It will just take some time. Well, thank you to both of you. It's certainly on the agenda, and uh, that's why we're talking about it. Some people say to me, why are you talking about it? Well, because a lot of people are raising it. That's why we're talking about it. I'll be back in a moment with Zeitgeist, where we unpack the political week on social media. Stay with us.